So I got the ECU back. That's the good news. Well, this is the bad news. I'm sorry, what? There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Seriously. Well, the, well basically I sent it over because um, I'm not getting a spark and I'm not getting, um, I'm not getting fuel. It just doesn't seem to want to run. But there's zero codes in there whatsoever. So as you can see, there is zero thing wrong with the ECU. I'm just, uh, <laughs> just you know what? Like I said in my previous video, if I had hair, it would be gone by now. And I have been wrapping my brain. That was two days ago, and the, the the best thing was is they've been kind enough to send it back to me without charging me. So let's just open the box and see what we got. Even though we know it's my bloody ECU. But one thing they did say is what I could do is I can end up sending them, well, try and crank it over. It should potentially, because it had old codes in there. Now, when I spoke to the garage, they said they cleared them, but it might have actually kept some previously old codes or what have you. But they've said that I can send it back to them and then it will have more updated codes. But, Well, it looks cleaner than it previously did, so they've given it a bit of a clean. Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick it in and I'm praying to God that they've erased the code and um, it's gonna fire up. But, oh bollocks, this is gonna damage. So another little bit of big news, oh big news, well good news I'd say, is the Mini is now sold, which is fantastic because that saved up some money for the 350Z. 350Z now is going into the garage on Monday to go through its MOT and a few other bits and then hopefully back on the road. So that's the other bit of good news. So here she is, the bane of my life. Now, like I said, I've got the ECU back and I've thought of a couple of other things which potentially it could be, it couldn't be, but I've got to admit, one thing I'm very, very happy about, and thank you to everyone that is following me and everyone that has just recently followed me, my previous video, which will be in the top right-hand corner now, has done absolutely amazingly well when it has come to this bike. So, <laughs> as much as I want to pour petrol on it and torch it, she's getting great views, <laughs> which I cannot believe, considering she's been a pain in the ass. But, all saying that, uh, the things that I am going to try, and like I say, thanks to everyone that has put comments on that previous video saying stick with it and whatnot. I am going to stick with it, guys. Don't worry about it. Um, it's just I'm going to be effing and blinding, screaming, and God knows what else throughout doing it. But I brought my laptop with me, and the reason being is I'm looking at all the electric stuff. Now, as stupid as it sounds, so this is the ignition. And one thing that the guy told me on the phone was the ignition system I had or put on it I got from eBay, which is a Chinese copy. It only cost me something like, I think it's about 50 quid. And he said that pretty much 90% of the ones that are all on eBay and what have you are crap. And he said, bin it and get a genuine one. So I rung up um, Kawasaki and asked how much it would cost for a new barrel and I nearly had a heart attack. 200 pounds just for a barrel and a key with the electrics on it. So. Parts of me are wondering if it is that ignition. And one thing I'm gonna try and do, I don't know how I'm gonna do it, is I'm gonna try and swap. The, well, the reason why I've got the um, the manual up there is because I wanna try and either swap the wires over to see if it'll go without the ignition, or, <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't know. Um, because I was going to bridge it, I was also going to, sorry, what I was going to do as well, sorry, I just remembered, is I was going to see if I've got it wrong on the wiring because the ignition, and I've spoke to other people, the ignition actually, the wires are different from the loom. Like you've got a blue one, as you can see right here, and this blue one goes into this red and blue one. And that's not crap standard. So that's why I'm going through this just to double check to make sure it's all correct. If it is, then I'll just do something, I don't know. I honestly think the first point of call, put the battery in, put the ECU back on, and just try it. Fingers crossed, pray to God, do every, absolutely everything 
to hope that it actually fires up. But I ain't that lucky. But hindsight, it's a nice, sunny, warm, lovely day. <laughs> Only plus side. Now, ever so quickly, I'm just gonna check to make sure that all the bloody colors are correct. Um, but like I say here, it says blue for the, oh, it's for the tail lights. Blue and then red and blue. And then you've got red, red, white, white, brown, brown, and what have you. Um, the other thing they said it could be, and this was from um, when I got it back from the garage, they said it could potentially be the um, tilt sensor. So there's a sensor in there, basically if, it, if the bike falls over, it automatically cuts it off. They checked it and thought it was okay by the look of it, I believe. So what I might do is I might take that off, bridge it, and just see if it works. But like I say, all my wiring <laughs> is correct. So, oh, let's just try it. I was gonna give her a name. Now I have got a name for her. I'm not gonna tell you yet because I don't think she deserves it until she fires up. I swear this has gotta be like a love-hate relationship. I love her, she hates me, but, oh, come on, darling. <laughs> you got really good reviews in your last one. So unless people wanna watch you just completely destroy me, I don't know, right. Oh, okay. I like to say, all the wiring is correct, so... Same as last time, that's exactly what has been happening. You're firing her up, FL light keeps flashing. Um, yeah, so that's no different. So guys, what I've just quickly done is I've taken out the battery cover box because it gives me a lot more room in here because I wanted to actually pull all the wiring out of here because it is all going to be stripped down um, and repainted, obviously if she plays ball. So, but doing so, it's actually giving me a lot more room in here because obviously this is um, where the line was cut. So I wanted to see more of this loom up here. And to be fair, it still seems to be covered in insulation tape, but from what people are telling me, that seems quite factory. But this is that tilt sensor I was telling you about. So if you listen, you might be able to hear the ball bearing in there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try and start it, flick that around a bit, and see if that is actually what's causing the problem. If not, then that's where I'm gonna try and look at, to, um, sorry, look at the point of trying to bridge this, hence we've got the wiring diagram again for that, see if I can bridge them both. Um, but I have no clue. <laughs> so let's see. Okay, so the ignition's on. This sensor is here. Let's try it. I very much doubt it's going to work, but you've got to try it and yeah. Okay guys, so as you can see, I've got the tank off. I've moved a bit further ahead. Um, as you know, firing it up did not work with the sensor and everything, but there's been something that has been buggering me for quite some time. And before I show you what that is, guys, this is day one, okay? What bugged me all this time is, I think I mentioned this before, is this. This tire wiring loom is covered in installation tape, okay? This stuff, this, so, not this, which is standard, this. <laughs> okay, some of it's this, but most of it's that. And I've been, I saw down on this wiring loom here, cause this is like um, a wire cover. And I don't know if that's standard or not, but I could understand that would be. But when this was all covered up, these wires here were poking out the top, okay? But still wrapped, but not flush with that. So it's been bugging me for ages. So I cut it back, pulled this back. And then I saw this. What the hell is that? And then I saw that. And I saw another one. Basically, they all look like this. So I've cut them all back. And I'm finding this. This one's got three cables sticking out the top. Okay. This one's got two sticking out the bottom. This one's got two sticking out the bottom. 
and this one here was hidden in the middle of all this loom. So the reason I said this is day one. <laughs> oh my God, what's going on? Um, I just got off the phone to the garage that I took it to. And like I say, I told them that it wasn't the ECU and they said, that's great news. But I said, I think I found out what it could be. And um, so basically, my their advice to me was see if I can get another loom because they could look at it, take it away again. They could look through all the loom because wiring is definitely not my forte. And with something like this, I'm not even going to try and touch it. So the other option is, is to buy another secondhand loom. Now I found one not so long ago for 80 quid on eBay and I wish I bloody bought it because now all I could literally do is unplug and plug and put it, wire it all back in how it's standardly done. And I reckon, I think that's what the problem is. It is a electrical fault with some idiot who doesn't know what they're bloody doing. <laughs> like, so just look at it. It's diabolical. Who, that's not standard. That is no way standard. Plus side, <laughs> at least I think I figured out the problem. <sighs> Onwards and upwards. Let's order a loom. Good thing I brought this to the garage now. Um, okay, so let's have a look. The N 900 loom. Please be one. Oh, I got two here. I think what I'm going to do, I'm not going to record it, is I'm just going to cut back a lot of that wiring just to see where it leads to, because if it does lead, or if I find something like, I don't know, a hidden immobiliser, which I very much doubt, but I've got to trace them wires to figure out where they're all going to. And then, um, yeah, see what's what. So, if you don't see anything else, flash forward even to wiring loom. Right guys, we are back and I don't have a wiring loom, but I have this. So within this bag of goodies, what I've got is, funny enough, I can't believe this. Oh, bear with, I have this. Now, you might recall what this is. This is an ECU for the bike. Yes, you are correct. Now within this little box of goodies, I've got an ECU, I've got a fuel cap, and I've got a new ignition barrel and a rear lock, which we're not going to use that anyway because I'm not going to bother having that. But these are the two things I need. I don't need this. One of them was going to cost me about 300 quid. Now, mine's fine, but I got all of this for 140 quid. Now, why may you ask? Nick, you said you were going to get a wiring loom. Yes, you are correct. But I've done a bit of research now. Believe it or not, all of what I showed you on that wiring loom, which has now been all taped back up, is standard. Yes, it is standard, believe it or not. So I don't need a wiring loom. So what I've ended up doing is getting a new one of these. Now, the reason now I've got that is because I spoke to a chap who's ended up doing something similar to his, and he found out that the Chinese cheap copy you get on eBay doesn't work with these bikes unless you put, I think it's a 10 ohm, resistor in the wiring loom. So, ended up getting this, which if you remember correctly, I said that um, Kawasaki wanted 200 and something quid. 140 quid with the ECU and things like that, believe it or not. So, what I have ended up doing is, I've rewired these, I've soldered them in place and I've left them like that. Because what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put some connectors on and just connect it straight up to, oh, sorry this original loom here. Now, fingers crossed, you'll fire straight up. But with my luck at the moment with this bike, I don't think that's gonna be quite so simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the connectors on, put this in, tank back on, and I'll see you in a minute. Right, so I moved it outside because I'm actually praying that she's gonna fire up. So at least it's not gonna echo and blow everything in there. So before I do it, let's get these cables on. Okay, they're now on. God, keys bent to buggery though. 
Um, oh, bear with. Yeah, the last thing I need to put on is this. At least it will tell me if the uh, FL light is still going. Let's plug that on. Now, like I said, from what I hear, the only thing now I know it could be is really that, but I'd be saying that all along. <laughs> so let's just get the battery on and see what happens. Alright, I'm just checking. Everything is all now connected up. That earth's on, that's all on. These are all in, ECU is in. Well, wouldn't have done that otherwise. Please guys, cross everything for me. <laughs> No FL light came on. No FL light came on. So, oh my God, come on. Come on, baby, please, please, please. Let's see if we get spark. We've got a spark. We've got a spark. Oh gosh, that is great news. We've got a spark. Okay, that is one thing less to worry about. So that bloody key ignition jobby is doing its job. So we've now got to figure out why we're not getting fuel. So yeah, okay, that's the next problem. Um, <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just ecstatic because we've got a spark. So that's one less thing to worry about. Okay, right. Oh, sorry, wind. Um, so what we're gonna do now is I put the plug back in. So I know I've got a spark in there. I just got to try and find a way of getting fuel in it. So tank back on maybe, it didn't squirt any fuel out when I tried, as in come out when I pulled the lead off. So maybe it's got no, not enough fuel in there. So I'm gonna try that now, tank back on. And yeah, <sighs> we're getting close guys, we're getting close. Okay guys, right, I'm, I'm just really, really excited right now um, because I put some more fuel in it and um, I put the, uh, sorry, I'm just, <laughs> you understand in a minute. Because obviously I tried to crank it over and nothing happened. So I put some more fuel in it thinking it was that. But what I thought I'd do is I had a second one of these. If you remember, I bought one. And so I thought, you know what, I'll stick that in. And that's um, basically brought me to this point. So I turned the key and I heard the pump. For the first time ever, I've heard the pump. So. Can you hear that? Let me try again. So the pump is now priming. <laughs> I'm, oh, fingers crossed guys, please. Oh. Oh, yeah. Keep all crossed please guys. Now I'm not saying that I haven't, it, sorry, let me try to get my words out. Sorry, I'm just so excited. I have not actually tried this, so I don't think I have. But this is the first time I've tried it since I've heard that go off. Fingers crossed. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Good too. Oh, no faults or anything. I'm like a pig swinging around in shit. <laughs> I'm so happy. Oh. Oh, literally, I don't know if you can hear me over the noise she's making. And she sounds amazing. Um, so it was the relay. It was at fault, it blew a relay when it was on its side. And um, it just needed a genuine ignition switch. Sorry, I'm just so over the moon right now, guys, I really am. Oh, yeah! Well, you now know what that means. That means we can strip her down, send the chassis, or sorry, chassis, send the frame off to be sandblasted, powder coated, and what have you. 
and turn this baby into a bobber. Yes! So guys, <laughs> so much. I'm just so, so happy right now, as you can probably see. Um, I've just literally just drove her just to the end of my driveway. She engages, she rides. It's uncomfortable sitting on that bloody bar, I will say. But she drives, and at the moment, I can't see any leaks or anything like that. Touch, bear with. Touch wood. So at the moment, we're doing all right. She's been running now for about 15 minutes. And she sounds amazing. I still can't get over the fact that that wire was standing, but yeah. I can't wait to get this project on the road. I can't wait to ride it as well. She is going to be ridden this summer. I can guarantee you that. Stay tuned guys for all that because like I say, that is going to happen. She's up to temperature, she's now shut off, and the fan's working. Oh. I am so relieved, guys. I really am. <laughs> so there we have it, guys. These two culprits are the problem of why all this time it wasn't starting. And it went to the garage, they couldn't figure it out, and they did a great job. They would have thought that this would have worked because well, you would think so, wouldn't you? But note to self to anyone that is watching this who has a motorbike or whatnot, do not go on eBay and get one of these cheap Chinese ones. Get a genuine one, second hand, or go to the dealer and get it at the end of the day. I'm sorry if you're having trouble hearing me because of the wind. I'm sorry, my mouth is just this big, big smile because like I say, that's taken me weeks, weeks to get this like this. And I just, oh yes. <laughs> but like I said, guys, that's, that's it, it's now time to strip her down and we're going to turn her into a bobber. And stay tuned guys, because this, this is going to be a great project. Now we've got her in this position, we've got to tear her down, we've got to send her off the paint, we've got to cut this all back, get rid of that, single seat, we're going to put a massive tyre on the back, and I might even keep that front wheel, I'm not too sure yet, but like I say, we've still got plenty of time. And just to let you know, on a sneak peek, on its way here now is another project of mine which I bought yesterday. So yeah, we've got another one coming. So we've, technically we've got three. We've got the bike, the 350Z and the one that's coming tonight. But you have to wait for another video for that one to come out, guys. But no further ado, guys. That's going to bring us to the end of the video. Please put some comments down below and please hit like and subscribe to this video. And I will see you on the next one. Take care, guys. Stay safe and I'll see you later. And you know what? Let's give it one more fire up.